boy has this been a long time coming. Now, I've seen lots of videos on YouTube about the Walther P99, though not nearly as many as I would like, because everybody's got a Glock. And one I have not seen is an unboxing. I've seen overviews, and I've seen people shoot them, and all that fun stuff, and I appreciate all that, but I've never seen an unboxing. Who doesn't have an unboxing? PS3s have unboxings, iPhones have unboxings, pretty much every gadget I could imagine has an unboxing. Most firearms have an unboxing. The B-22 has an unboxing, but not its big brother, the P-99. Well, that's going to change right now. So what you're looking at is what took me over one, well, not over one year, a couple days shy of one year to get because I live in the People's Republic of New York, and you cannot touch a pistol in this state without a license. Of course, you're looking at the back of it here because it's got my personal information on it, but I assure you this is my license to carry concealed. And you need a license, whether it be a premises license, a uh, carry-on-work license, or a carry-concealed license like I have to even touch a pistol in the People's Republic of New York. And that's always fun. But the wait has been much worth it, and we have the end result here, so we're going to unbox it, I'm going to show you what you get, and I'm going to talk about my initial impressions with it, and I'm very excited about that. So, let's get right into it. I'm going to have a pointer in case uh, I need to point out any small things, and uh, it's, today it's going to be the uh, Spyderco Paramilitary 2, another good thing that I just got recently. But here we are, it comes in this blue hard plastic case with the Walther logo on it, it's a nice hard case. I mean, it's not incredible. It's not like a Pelican case or anything like that, but then again, it's free. What can you complain? Uh, on the front, you'll notice a big notice, and this is always fun. Let's get into our first uh, uh, not rant, but thing I'd like to mention here. Let's zoom in on this, or excuse me, focus. Notice this handgun has not been tested for compliance with Massachusetts law. It is not to be sold in Massachusetts. Now, let me explain that. You're going to think I'm joking about this, but this is actually what happens in Massachusetts. Now, I wish somebody from Massachusetts would clear this up, because from what I've been told, the firearms actually have to go through a melt test. Uh, like, they put the guns in an oven, like Glocks and stuff like that, and if it doesn't pass the test, it's not safe enough for Massachusetts. Now, that's the most ridiculous thing I've heard, and, well, it's one of the most, because remember, I'm in New York. That is so stupid, I would think it would come out of New York, but, uh, uh, no, that's actually a Massachusetts thing, so this firearm right here could not have been sold in Massachusetts. Another thing is, and they can't even use the mag magazine excuse because this baby comes with 10 rounders because it was made during the assault weapons ban, I'll talk about that in a second. But yes, no Massachusetts, bad Massachusetts. Let's take a look around the box. Back, nothing. Left side, nothing front the latches and right side some information okay we have the SKU number for the item a WAP 66000 the serial number go ahead and steal it all handguns are registered in New York so all that will happen is you will get in much trouble and of course it is the P99 caliber 40 Smith & Wesson barrel 4 inches imported by Walther USA made in Germany now why the P99? I don't just open the damn box. Don't worry, we'll get to it. Uh, it's James Bond's handgun. I've wanted this handgun probably since I was about 12, and I saw it in Tomorrow Never Dies. <laughs> yes, uh, James Bond originally got this handgun in Tomorrow Never Dies in Wei Lin's apartment in China, and he also got an Omega Seamaster, like you see right there. <laughs> of course, I have a video on that. This is going to be all about the P99, not the Omega, though they're both beautiful. And I thought it was the epitome of sexiness. And everybody has a Glock out there. Or everybody, not even everybody has a Smith & Wesson M&P and things like that. It's pretty much everybody has a Glock. And, you know, this is a little different. And I think it is much sexier than a Glock with nice curves. It's like a beautiful woman. But enough talking, right? Open the damn box already. How can somebody talk for nearly four minutes without opening the box? There, I'll say the comments so you don't have to. Well, why don't we open the box? Let's take a look at this bad boy. Two tabs on the front. Open her up, and of course you get your standard padded pistol case. And here we are. Here is the Walther P99 Generation 1, that's an important note, and 40 Smith & Wesson. Now, I wanted the Generation 1. In fact, I had to get this off of Gunbroker, and it was new old stock, so it was brand new. But he got it back when it came out. This gun was made in 1999. I'll tell you how I know in a minute. But I wanted the Gen 1 because it has the nice smaller slide serrations. It has the, uh, what I think looks better. I don't, <laughs> yeah, you can complain about the functionality all you want. The nice magazine release that's a little bit smaller. And uh, I, I much prefer the look of the smaller slide serrations and uh, the look of the gun in general. The, uh, the Gen 2 has uh, these bends here where the slide curves up. It has that in great uh, 
that engraved or cut out, and I just don't think it looks nearly as good. I wanted a Gen 1. I wanted a 9mm, but uh, this just was a deal I could not pass up, so I got the 40. There's not much difference between the two. In fact, it uses the 9mm frame, it uses the 9mm recoil spring, it's just uh, the front of the slide is not uh, milled out up here. Uh, on the 9mm it is, and it's a hair longer on the uh, 40 caliber version. But still, it has the nice, sexy look. So let's take this out and move this to a side. Move this aside just one second. You also get an extra magazine. There was one in the gun. And you get the back straps. You get three back straps. Here's one. The second one is, of course, on the gun. And the third one I put up here. Walther P99, first gun to use interchangeable back straps. First polymer gun to use interchangeable back straps. I don't know if it's the first gun ever, but I know it's the first polymer gun to use interchangeable back straps. That is one important note about the P99. So it comes with the three back straps, extra magazine. It comes with a cleaning tool, which is actually pretty nice. You got the little loop on the end. You have the patch holder there. Pretty nice cleaning tool. Under here is some pretty interesting stuff. You get your tool bag which has a front sight removal tool, which is almost like a uh, Allen wrench, but I don't. I think it doesn't have a uh, head on the end. I could be wrong on that, though. I had to change the sight. I'm just not good with those tool things. You have a little uh, either wooden or hard plastic yellow dowel here for taking down the magazines from Mechgar. They provide that. All the magazines are from Mechgar. There it is, Mechgar. And they also make, they make uh, magazines for a lot of brands. Beretta. Uh, they're starting to make some 1911 mags, and it comes with different front sights. It comes with one shorter and two higher front sights. It comes with a number four front sight installed. I had to change it to a number five. It was hitting a bit high. What else is under here? Oop, let's focus so we're not looking at blurry crap. Owner's manual, of course, for both the... 9mm and 40 Smith & Wesson semi-automatic pistol. Really basic stuff in here, but it's clear and concise. I really do love the first line in this. You'll, you'll love this in the uh, owner's manual. <clears throat> to fire this gun, pull the trigger. Thank you! <laughs> I was always wondering how those darn uh, firearms worked, <laughs> but you've clearly explained it. Now, here is something about the uh, importing into the U.S., how the new warranty will now be done at a different location. This firearm is vastly out of warranty, though, so it doesn't really matter for me. I don't even know if that's still the warranty place. I would imagine it is now that it's being imported by Smith & Wesson. But, <clears throat> excuse me, you never know. And here, this is something I really do like that they include. What is this? This is a target. I did not shoot this target. This was fired in Germany. You can see it's got all that strange German writing on there at 25 meters. There's the signature of Schutze. Schutze's a good man, I hear. Now, here it is. They fire from 25 meters. They fire hollow point ammunition, and apparently they fire four shots, and they're all within the center ring at 25 meters as a quality control check. Really cool that you get this. It's also got my serial number there next to the P99, so that you know it's not a P38, P1, P5, P5 Compact, P88, P88 Compact, P88 Champion, P88 Competition, PP, PPK, PPKS, but it is in fact the P99, and your caliber here, 40 Smith & Wesson, it also comes in 9x19, is very popular, it also comes in 9x21, which I've never heard of, and a few other here. Now, put this away, I'll put it over to the side here, what everybody wants to see. In fact, the P99. Here it is. Let's move. Whoops! I almost knocked the camera to Timbuktu. Now let's take a look at this here. Let's see if we can turn that down so we can get a better view of it. Move this out of the way. Here we are. Well, they're a P99. Completely German made. Some people get confused. It's a lot of uh, misconceptions that go around. Hopefully I might be able to clear them up. Oh, I heard that uh, Smith & Wesson makes the P99s now. And I heard this and that. And, you know, maybe they just service them. Blah, 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 blah. Let me explain it to you. The Gen 1 P99s right here, which have these small slide serrations, you'll be able to tell them. If you see a Gen 2, it'll be strikingly obvious which one's a Gen 1 and a Gen 2. Uh, they are all completely made in Germany. You can check the frame right here. And on this side it is. Made in Germany right there on the frame. Okay, it also has on this frame the eagle. Let's take a look at the pointer. 
this mark right here, it's hard to see. You'll get a better view of it on the slide, but this is the Eagle Over N proof stamp. Okay, that's very important to look for, okay? And you'll see another uh, view of it here on the back of the slide. Obviously, right here. That is the Eagle Over N proof mark. That means that it was proofed at the Alum. I think I'm, I'm pronouncing that correctly. Ohm, Alum, proof house in Germany. The entire slide and the entire, everything about this gun is German made. It is a Gen 1. All Gen 1s are completely 100% German made. Now, Smith & Wesson did make some uh, P99-like guns in, I think they started in 2004 or something like that. But they never, just Smith & Wesson never made a P99 except for a very small run of 40 caliber ones that are pretty rare. They're extremely rare, but I don't know when they started making those 40 caliber ones. But Smith & Wesson never made a P99 besides that. What they did was they made an SW99, which has the slide made by them, but not the... Uh, the uh, lower here. Uh, well, I know it's lower for AR. I believe it's the same for uh, pistols too, isn't it? I don't know. Frame. There we go. <laughs> Again, this is my first first handgun here because of the uh, People's Republic of New York. So <laughs> you're going through it with me, and some people are probably going to think I'm idiot saying certain things, but that's okay. We all enjoy a bit of humor. But yes, it has the lower made by actually Walther in Germany. And it has the upper made by Smith & Wesson. I think the SW99s, which Smith & Wesson calls them, are completely ugly. <laughs> I do not like them at all. They look really weird. <laughs> they don't have the nice, smooth angles of the P99 that I've come to know and love. Uh, as for importing now, you can still get regular P99 Gen 2s and Gen 3s imported now by Smith & Wesson, but they are entirely German-made. They are they are P99s. If you're looking at an SW99, people get confused. If you're looking at an SW99, those are Smith & Wesson. They don't make them anymore. Uh, but the P99s are still made, and those are 100% German-made. The things you want to look for are <clears throat> made in Germany on the uh, frame, which doesn't mean it's it's completely made in Germany, because you still got the slide, but you, on the slide you want to look for the Eagle Over N proof mark of being fired in the Alum, or Ohm, I don't know what it's pronounced, U-L-M, uh, proof house. That's where it was uh, test fired. And it's also it also appears here, right there on the barrel hood. So, the P-99 here in 40 Smith & Wesson Gen 1, a James Bond's handgun. What are my thoughts on it? Well, let's give you a quick overview on it before I give my thoughts. Let's not jump to conclusions here. Uh, well, I love it. A little spoiler alert, spoiler alert. But let's give you some of the features. Okay. 40 caliber. It has a 12 round capacity, which is 12 plus 1, which would mean that it has a 13 round capacity. However, <laughs> this particular gun, let's make sure it's clear here because I need the magazine out anyway. Okay, this particular gun, okay, obviously it's clear, uh, was made during the Bill Clinton assault weapons ban, you know, the one that was going to stop crime overnight, that, that wonderful joke. And so therefore, again, this was made in, well, this was made in 1999 here. I'll quickly tell you how I know that. Because I said I was going to and I didn't. But, on the front, right here, there's letters, KK. Much like Zippo, they use the, uh, the numbers representing, or letters representing numbers. Very simply, A through K is 0 through 9. So KK is 9-9-1999, this was made. Now, the Bill Clinton assault weapons ban was still going on during that time. No magazine devices, blah, 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 over 10 rounds, we're going to save the world, blah, 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 don't kill the pandas. Now, that means this came, because it was made in 99 with two 10-round magazines. Okay, you can see the little, little plastic wedge here, which limits it to 10 round instead of 12. Fantastic, right? But, you know, we're in 2012 now. Why don't you just go buy some uh, regular capacity magazines, which are 12 for this gun and 15 for the 9mm version? Well, I live in the People's Republic of New York, and they, for some godforsaken reason, think that 10-round magazines are much safer than 12-round magazines, so I can't have standard capacity magazines for this. I still have to have the Bill Clinton mags, which was a good thing that I found this, because otherwise what would have to happen is I would have to get the gun shipped here have the magazines taken out and go buy my own mags, but no, I was glad because these magazines, Walther magazines, must be made out of solid gold or something like that because they're about $50 a piece. <laughs> they can also take Smith & Wesson 99 mags, which are about 30 the only difference, of course, being one is Walther stamped on the bottom, one is Walther stamped on the bottom, the other one is Smith & Wesson stamped. That is literally the only difference. They're both made by Mechgar with the same patent numbers and all that good stuff. But yes, I can't have those big scary 12 round mags here. I gotta stick to 10 here in the People's Republic of New York. So that's the magazines. They're made out of, I think, steel or something like that, and they are all drop free. Doesn't matter if they are uh, loaded, they are drop free. 
So that's the magazines. Now that you know, you know the capacity of it, it has uh, uh, the magazine releases here. Let's put the magazine back in. It is a fantastic ambidextrous magazine release here on the uh, trigger guard. You can hit it with your thumb, which I don't like doing, or you can hit it with your middle finger or trigger finger, which I do. You shoot, bang, 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 empty. I hit it with my trigger finger, and the mag drops out. Fantastic. I love it much more than having to hit a uh, button with my thumb. How would you know it's your first pistol? I just know these things. <laughs> Moving on now, uh, let's talk about some of the things that make this gun unique, including the trigger. Okay, of course it's still empty. Okay, what we have here is the P99 with the anti-stress trigger. It has the anti-stress trigger, meaning there are three trigger modes on this thing. What we have is double action, single action, and anti-stress. This is really a fantastic trigger design. What it means is... Okay, you have your gun right here, and you say you're going to load a mag, all right? I'm going to put a mag in. Click, I put a mag in. You have to use your imagination here, okay? Then I'm going to rack the slide. Now there's one in the chamber, okay? Hypothetically, of course, safety-minded folks. Now, what we have here on the back is the striker cocked indicator. That means that the striker is in the rearmost position, and it's ready to go. However, the trigger is still in the forwardmost position. What it's in right now is called anti-stress mode. That means you have the full length of the trigger pull. However, from here, the full, from all the way forward to here, the, the gun has not fired yet. From there to there, it's extremely light. It's like there's nothing, okay? Now once it's clicked here, it's in single action mode. If you take the trigger back a little bit farther, you'll come to a breaking point. This is the end of warnings for anybody who may be standing on the other side of the gun. Because little pressure and no travel from here, and the gun fires. Okay, so now you know anti-stress, and then of course you have single action and double action. Let's explain those. Put a magazine in, click, rack the slide to chamber one. Okay, now you're in anti-stress mode, okay? Now, say you want to carry it and you want to be safe, because this is an awfully light trigger pull here. You don't want to, you probably don't want to be carrying like this. How do I carry it? I carry it in double action mode. Okay, the striker's currently cocked. You can see the red warning indicator there. It's in the rearwardmost position. All you have to do is press the decocker, which is this button right here. Press the decocker, the striker goes back in. The gun will not fire, of course, unless you want to lose your thumb. The gun will not fire, but you were in double action mode. You have a round in the chamber, but now you're in double action. What that means is you have a long, heavy trigger pull. You have a long, heavy trigger pull from front to back. It's going to be heavy the entire way. But if you pull it one smooth motion, and it's heavy, but you pull it, the gun will fire. Okay? That's for safety. That's the safest way to carry it right there. Okay, now after it fires in double action mode or anti-stress mode or anything, what's going to happen is the slide's going to cycle. Let me pull the trigger. The slide's going to cycle. Then you're going to let your trigger or your finger off the trigger. And now it's going to be in single action mode, and the rest of your shots are going to be in single action. So whether you fire from anti-stress or double action, after that first shot, the rest are going to be single action. And that's just going to be a light trigger pull. Bring the trigger right here, and then it breaks. I prefer to carry it in double action. It's the safest. Uh, but you, you could very well carry it in anti-stress. That's why they implemented it. I'll put it back in anti-stress. You could have it like this. That What this does is gives you a little bit more time to think about your shots. But again, it's very light. you got to be careful with it. You're like, oh, I don't know if I want to shoot this guy, but blah, blah, blah. And of course, when you pull it back to single action, you can let it off. And you're in single action mode now. And now you got to be real careful. Because you bring it back here, and then bang, the gun fires. So that's the three trigger modes in the anti-stress trigger of the Walther P99. It's a fantastic trigger. I Like I said, I carry it in double action. When I want to uh, shoot, if it is in double action, there is a way to get it into uh, anti-stress or single action without racking the slide. You just move the slide back a little bit. Okay, you'll hear it click, and the striker will be cocked. And then now you're in anti-stress, and then, of course, it's single action mode. And that's how I use if I want to do a little precision shooting, using the... Take a look here. Three dot sights. Again, I had to replace the front one with one of the little bit larger ones that they give you. But they're three dot sights, and they work fine for me. I do want to put night sights on it, but they're fine for right now. Now that I put the taller front sight on there, it is just hitting perfectly. And again, for having never shot pistols before, I'm not doing too bad. <laughs> I'm a little proud of myself. But yes, I'll pull the trigger here. 
And yeah, I'm not doing too bad. Okay, now I talked about those three interchangeable back straps. I haven't needed to change them because the medium one fits my hand well, but they come, it comes with a smaller and a larger one. Here they are. They're made out of a slightly soft, rubbery type material. Uh, not, not too soft, but a little bit soft. You just take... I don't need our pointer again. Take this pin out and this pin out with a small punch. The back straps will come off. You can put another one on to fit the size of your hand. It is contoured, of course, this is the script right here to your hand, and it just melts right in there really well. You can get a nice grip on it. Now let's talk about recoil. A lot of people said, oh, you know, the 40 cartridge is over the 9. you got to get this pistol in 9mm because the 40 is too much of recoil. Um, I don't think those people... Uh know what they're talking about and, and they could they could be very familiar with nine millimeter and that's the only one that they want to shoot but you know 40 is just too much for them but no having shot this in 40 and having never shot the nine i can honestly say that 40 is not that bad <laughs> it's uh not really that much recoil at all especially when you're used to shooting a 12 gauge with just a pistol grip but <laughs> that's another story but it's not that bad at all in fact the bullets are not that much different oh excuse me cartridges ha 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 troll alert here they are. Here is a 40 caliber on the left. By the way, fun fact, all 40 caliber cartridges have a flat nose. It has to do with the uh, the barrel length and the, uh, the frame, something like that. I'm sure somebody can explain it a bit, a bit better, but uh, all 40 caliber cartridges are flat nose. Here's a 40 and here's a 9 millimeter next to it. So here's what they look like. Let's see if we can get a size comparison on the back. One on the left, you can see, is clearly a little bit larger, but blah, 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 blah. It's not, it's not that much of a, a big recoil difference. Like, I was scared because some people said, Oh, man, 40 is going to own you if you get this gun in 40. No, it's not. Not at all. Even though this gun was originally designed in just 9mm, it was so popular that they had it in 40 caliber. They had it made in 40 caliber. 40 caliber, of course, being the, uh, the cartridge designed for the FBI. Uh, so it, it's a pretty popular cartridge as well. I guess people want a little more stopping power. Uh, the SW99, Smith & Wesson's version, came in a 45 ACP, but not the uh, the actual Walther. They just come in 9 and 40. Another thing I'd like to look at is the accessory rail on the front here. It is a proprietary proprietary rail for some of the uh, Walther accessories you can get. It's not a Picatinny rail. The Gen 2 Walthers have the Picatinny Weaver. I get those confused. Rail, but the universal one. And, uh, yeah, the Gen 2s have this. Gen 1s do not, but I don't want to really attach anything to the front of it anyway. <laughs> but there you go. It's roll marked Walther P99 on there. If you take a look at the barrel hood here. It says Walther 40 Smith & Wesson, my wonderful serial number, made in Germany. And then, of course, some warnings. Read the safety manual, and then it's in German there. And that's pretty much the overview of the gun. Now... Being the first unboxing of this gun I have seen on YouTube, I hope I haven't bored you all too much talking for nearly 25 minutes, and probably by the time the video actually ends, it'll be over that amount, but I really hope I haven't bored you too much. Oh, let me just say, uh, the 40 caliber, like I said, it doesn't have the machining on the front of the slide, the, uh, the front bit milled out here, so you might wonder, it's not going to really fit in those Fabus holsters like, you know, this one right here, because the Fabus holsters, you can see where it's machined in right there. Uh, it's not going to fit, you know, there's going to be a big problem. Well, I say, considering I carry this Fabus holster <coughs> when I carry this gun sometimes, that you are, in fact, incorrect. <laughs> it fits in there just fine, and getting it out is not that hard either. There we are. Uh, and, and the Crossbeat Super Tuck as well. I just told, except the Crossbeat Super Tucks are custom made, so I just told them that it was for the 40 version. They said it would work with all barrel types, so <laughs> that, of course, would include the 40. Uh, yeah, so that's pretty much, I think I've covered everything here that I can about the unboxing of this fantastic firearm. And that's pretty much the Walther P99. Let's get one more look at it. Slide back. Of course, you got the vertical barrel tilt there for John Browning's design. Oh! <laughs> what in idiot <laughs> you've been waiting this long i haven't even taken it down let's do that before we wrap up this video <laughs> i know i'm going on but that's my usual style isn't it here's how you take it down don't be an idiot first of all okay first of all the slide's got to come forward what i did was i didn't realize you had to decock it but you do you have to decock it either pulling the trigger or hitting the decocker okay it's decocked now the takedown is extremely simple it's going to be really weird to do this through the camera viewfinder here ah i found a way 
Okay, you're gonna grab it like this, pull it back a little bit, pull down on the takedown tab, slide comes right off. It doesn't get any simpler than that. Okay, just in case I did that a little fast for you, there is a takedown tab right here, and you pull the slide back a little bit, pull down on those tabs, and the slide comes right off the front. So you've got the frame here, slide here, you have this recoil spring here, you just push it forward a little bit and then pull it down, it pops right out, do the same thing with the barrel, push the barrel forward a little bit, and then it drops right out the bottom. Left with your slide, I don't, I don't take the internal components down yet, I've never had to. <laughs> I fired about 200 rounds through it, I haven't had to do it yet. But here's your barrel, or excuse me, here's your slide, obviously it's not barrel. Here's your barrel. Should be a little dirty because I was in there shooting. Look, it's like the gun barrel from James Bond. Anyway, too much fun. Recoil spring, both the 9mm and 40 use the same. Recoil is also dead symbol. Going to be a little challenging through the viewfinder here, but you take your barrel, you take your slide, you push the barrel in just as so. Take your recoil spring, you want to put the knobbed end facing forward. Put it in like this. Push it forward a little bit, lock it on the barrel, just like so. And once you have that all together, you run the slide along the guide rails here. Rack it, you do not need to push the catch up, it'll automatically do it. And then I decock it as if I was going to carry it. <laughs> carry it, excuse me. And that's pretty much it. That's the Walther P99 Gen 1 with the AS trigger. They also make the QA trigger, the double action only trigger. No, thank you. I wanted the original. <laughs> but yes, and I hope I didn't bore you too much, <laughs> but uh, thanks for sticking with me. Y'all probably wanted to see this because you're P99 fans. That's why you're watching this video. So am I. I'm <laughs> probably one of the biggest. And of course, this gun has been featured in more video games and movies than I could count. And I'll probably have a video just about the video games that this has been in. I know that might not appeal to everybody, but there's... Not only have they changed the name around a bit to avoid copyright reasons, and I'll talk about a few of those in that video. Uh, there's just so many different variations of it, different magazine capacities, uh, maybe even different calibers, I don't know. Like, a few a few games that I can think of uh, right off the top of my head are pretty much all the James Bond games, Modern Warfare 3 for uh, Call of Duty, uh, Rainbow Six Vegas 2, and the list could go on forever, but uh, again, I'll save that for a separate video, uh, because I do enjoy the, uh, the gun in the games. Sometimes I'll buy a game just because it's got this gun in it. Oh, I know that's a terrible thing to say, but yes, speaking of which, Uncharted Drake's Fortune has a Walther P99 at his main gun. Actually, it's not. It has an external hammer. It almost looks like a combination of the P99 and the P22. But again, that's for that other video. Enough for rambling on for now. All right, that's it. You guys take it easy, and you guys make sure you go see 007 Skyfall here in November. Okay, I'm out. Thank you for watching.